Shalom. My name is Isaac Ben Israel, and I would like to welcome you to Hebrew Culture 101. The topic of discussion today is Sunday is not the Sabbath. When we get ready to examine these things, we have to uh, uh, look at some of the belief uh, beliefs that we have. Uh, we truly believe that there is a separation between church and state, as it is supposed to be. But when we examine those things, we find that Emperor Constantine passed an edict in 321 AD that changed the day of worship to the venerable day of the sun or Sunday. And then he confirmed that in the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. Um, this is why many people worship on Sunday and they have no, uh, no idea why they do that. This was a act of the state, not of the church. Do understand that Constantine had absolutely no authority whatsoever with the church. Uh, he was a ruler. This was a government uh, uh, sponsored event. This had absolutely nothing to do with the church. You have to also consider the things that are going on today with this uh, uh, proposed religious freedom bill. Um, the whole thing of the religious freedom bill is it's supposed to give pastors freedom from being sued if someone comes in uh, and demands a same-sex marriage and that does not fit their beliefs, um, then that is supposed to protect them from those things. But now you have a lot of businesses saying that they're going to pull out uh, uh, of you know those areas if they allow this religious freedom uh, bill to to pass once again now you see that the state is deciding what the church does letting you know further that there is no separation between church and state depending on how the church set up its business uh, 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 organization when you get right down to it the church signed or uh, set themselves up to be 501c3 uh, by the IRS, which then gave the government control over their organization. Um, according to what's written, even in the IRS publications, a church is already 501c3 without filing for those uh, 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 that paperwork. But in doing so, now the government gets to dictate what things they can and cannot do. So had they never filed for that piece of paperwork, they wouldn't be relying on the state to pass a religious freedom bill that then protects them. The Bible says that they should not have to deal with a same-sex marriage. The state should not have that authority to tell them whether or not they can or cannot. So even in examining that, this is the same thing with why the people are obeying the state-sponsored setup of a Sunday Sabbath. Many people have this, this uh, uh, poster of the Ten Commandments on their wall, and they will uh, 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 proudly display the Ten Commandments while they break the fourth one every week. And it is amazing when people kind of get off kilter, when they get something wrong, all of a sudden, that particular thing that they're wrong in doesn't matter. When what we're supposed to do, if we find something that we're doing wrong, if we are to uh, uh, be born again, as Christ said we're supposed to be, then once we find out that those things are incorrect, we change those things. But what we have been told is that, well, the Sabbath really doesn't matter uh, as long as you keep it uh, 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 you know, holy, it doesn't matter which day you do that on, but we're going to uh, uh, see that this Sabbath is based on uh, some really holy things. Of course, we're talking about the creation of, of this earth. Yahweh created this and rested on the seventh day. So this doesn't have anything to do with anything that anybody else did later this Sabbath day is the first thing that was blessed and sanctified by the creator and is the first thing that man changed. I want to read something to you in Isaiah 11, um, and I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Yesi, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, 
And this is talking about the Messiah. Um, we're talking about Yesi, which is uh, 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 giving you uh, the lineage of King David. And then uh, Christ being, of course, the son of David physically, but spiritually the son of Elohim. Verse two, and the spirit of Yahweh shall rest upon him. One, the spirit of wisdom. Two, and of understanding. Three, the spirit of counsel. Four, of might. Five, spirit of knowledge. Six, and of fear of Yahweh. Seven, those are seven spirits. And Christ had all seven of them. So when people want to tell you that the Sabbath can be on any day, there's a foundation here. You have seven holy days. You have seven spirits. People always tell you they caught the spirit. The first thing you should ask is which one did you catch? Because according to Isaiah 11 verses 1 and 2, there are seven spirits. So how could you, which one did you catch? And if you caught one, something should be different in your life than it was before. So we have the seven holy days, which are, 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 are set apart holy days that Yahweh has said was important unto him. And then the seventh one is in the seventh month. So even when you deal with judgment, you have these seven trumpets, these seven vials. You have everything set on the same way that the creation was done. So believing that you can change the seventh day to the first day, which is essentially what is done, what has been done. People believe that, okay, it's just one day difference from Saturday to Sunday. And no, it's the complete opposite. Sunday is the first day. The Sabbath or uh, 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 the seventh day is the last day. So you, you understand the, the trickery of the adversary. This little, what people believe is a one day switch is in effect, the complete opposite. I want to read something to you in Acts chapter 13. It says, And when the Yehudim were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Yehudim and religious proselytes followed Saul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of Elohim. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of Elohim. So this shows you that this little thing that uh, uh, Constantine ended up changing, this shows you that when the Gentiles first heard the word, the, the Gentiles heard the word on the Sabbath day. So they uh, uh, kept the way that the children of Israel were doing things. It was not in their mind to try and change those things. You have to understand that uh, uh, what we read, we're talking about 325 AD. We're talking about 300 plus years later that the Sabbath was changed. But this is after the birth, death, and resurrection of Christ, and they are still keeping the Sabbath. So you have to keep that uh, 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 in your uh, mind when you uh, uh, examine these things. I want to read something else to you uh, because we also have a lot of people that deal with the whole part of speaking in tongues, uh, but they don't want to deal with the holy day in which the gift of speaking in tongues uh, was given. And I'm going to read something to you in Acts chapter 2. It says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Another tongue is another language um, as the spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem, uh, Yehudim, devout men out of every nation under heaven because they had been spread abroad. They had learned different languages. Now, this gift of speaking in tongues has given them the ability to communicate with one another, although they have been spread about. So now you have taken this gift of speaking in tongues and turned it into a whole bunch of goo gobbledygook that people believe uh, is some kind of, of holy communication, not understanding that this is done uh, during one of those seven 
special holy days that also fit within the setup of the Holy Sabbath, the seventh day. Okay, when we examine these things about this day of Pentecost, I want to explain something to you so you can see what was happening. Because there are a lot of people that also tell you that these holy days, these are things that we don't have to do. Keep in mind, this is Acts. The book of Acts is the first 30 years of the church. So this is after the birth, death, and resurrection of Christ, and they're still keeping the Sabbath, and they're still keeping the holy days. So consider this. I want to read something to you in Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 5. It says, In the 14th day of the first month at even is Yahweh's Passover. See, what you have to understand is you can't just keep Pentecost. For them to keep Pentecost, they had to first keep the Passover. Then in verse 6, it says, On the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Um, then if we uh, uh, jump to verse 10, it says, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When you be coming to land, uh, in the land, uh, which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. Now, um, from there, we jump down to verse 15. It says, And you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Verse 16, Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath uh, shall you number fifty days. You shall offer a new meat offering unto Yahweh. Seven times seven is forty-nine. So, the next day, Pentecost is always on a Sunday. Why? Seven times seven is seven Sabbaths. So seven, what we call Saturday, seven Saturdays would pass. Add one day, it would be the 50th day. That would be Pentecost. Even today, you have some churches keeping Pentecost. Uh, but they keep it for financial gain. Because this is one of the times that all males are to make an appearance and there is an offering that is supposed to be uh, 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 brought. Um, uh, you have, even in those areas of, of the Pentecost, we've had situations where there were uh, uh, Sunday keeping churches who kept Pentecost on the exact same day that we kept it. That means they knew when Passover was, they knew when the Feast of Unleavened Bread was, they knew when first fruits was, and then counted seven Sabbaths from the, the weekly Sabbath after they brought the, the, the first fruit offering, which then gives you the day of Pentecost. But they didn't keep any of those things, but then still kept the Pentecost. And that's hypocrisy. That's like wanting a check, but not going to work. But this is not a, 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 a uncommon thing uh, for Sunday keeping churches because you have to consider there are many people who keep Easter but do not understand how the day is calculated. You know, it is this whole thing of waiting to the vernal equinox and then picking this, uh, 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 going by the full moon and the first Sunday after that. This is going to make sure they wait. The whole part is the vernal equinox, so they make sure that it is in spring this was their way of trying to make sure that the Easter celebration stays in the season where the resurrection happened, but without keeping the Passover itself. What he did was Passover. So they came up with a formula, a calculation. This is why nobody even knows when Easter is. They always have to wait until the calendar comes out. Uh, before they can determine which Sunday is going to be Easter Sunday. They all know that it's going to be on a Sunday, but they don't know which Sunday it's going to be until the calendar is put out. And there are people who work on that to uh, uh, determine that for the rest of the people. So we see that uh, uh, man has gone about to do a lot of other things when all they had to do was keep what was written. I want to read something else to you in Mark chapter 15 and verse 42 because there's this misconception that no one knows when the Sabbath really is because people try to tell you, okay, they've changed the, the um, uh, calendar 
system. We have to understand that there was a Julian calendar, a Gregorian calendar, and then we have uh, the lunar slash solar calendar that the Hebrew Israelites uh, use or that we are supposed to use. Um, when you deal with the Gregorian calendar, think of, pay attention to these things. You have September, October, November, December. Now, septum is, uh, the, the, uh, is a Latin phrase that means seven. Oc, October, um, oc, how many sides does the octagon have? Eight sides. But you notice October is the 10th month. So what they did was they added two months for Julius and Augustus Caesar, July and August. Now, you take those two out, Septim, the seventh month, completely fits the Hebrew calendar. Ak, which would be the eighth month, um, you have uh, uh, Septim, Ak, Novem. Novem means nine, okay? Yet it's the 11th month. Then Decim, December. Decim is the decimal system is what? Based on tens. It was the 10th month before they added the other two for Julius and Augustus Caesar. So you take those two out, it matches the Hebrew calendar. So we have to understand those things that what the heathen does is just take what they want and add to it. But those things we can clearly back up and put those things back in their order. Uh, Mark chapter 15 and verse 42. It says, now when the even was come, because it was the preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath. So keep that in mind. The day before the Sabbath, Friday, is called the preparation. You prepare so that you don't have to do a whole lot of other things on the Sabbath. You prepare all of those things before it is that time. So we have to understand that uh, uh, even in death, Christ kept the Sabbath and he rested on that Sabbath day and then rose on that first day. Uh, you have a lot of people that will have a lot of things to say concerning that because uh, uh, the religious authority was questioning Christ a lot. They were questioning Yahshua about those things that were done on the Sabbath and uh, 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 people thought that the way that he was dealing that, with that was saying that this Sabbath was no longer uh, 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 applicable. Uh, but it was quite the contrary because what he was explaining and what the people did not get was he stated the, the priests profane the Sabbath and are held blameless. Uh, when you read the New Testament, you find out that Yahshua was made our high priest, which made the uh, disciples under priests. They were priests. Now, they were not, they didn't have the authority that the, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees had, so people did not recognize them as priests. But it doesn't matter what people recognize, it matters what the Most High recognizes. Um, uh, keep in mind, it said, um, they said, Elijah must come first and turn the hearts of, of, of the people, of the children, Back to the father. He said, Elijah has come. And then later they understood that he was talking about Johann and the Baptist. So it doesn't matter what people recognize. What people think, and feel, and believe doesn't mean anything. What matters is what the Most High has set up. I want to read something to you in Luke chapter 23. Now that we know that the preparation is the day before the Sabbath. Uh, Luke chapter 23 and verse 53. And... It says, this man went unto uh, Pilate and begged the body of Yahshua, and he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone, wherein never a man was before laid. And that day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. Now, what do they call it? They call it Good Friday. So how difficult is it to figure out that the day before the Sabbath was Friday? So what's the next day? Saturday. This is the New Testament. Yet we allow people to tell us that we don't know when the Sabbath is. Um, verse 55, and the women also which came uh, with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was laid. 
and they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. So it lets you know the Sabbath drew on. You had this Good Friday and today people are celebrating Good Friday. And then they have uh, uh, skip the Sabbath and then have Resurrection Sunday. All of it is based here. If you just stop allowing them to bewitch you with all of these things and slow down and read it, you will get the understanding that Yahweh's holy Sabbath is not Sunday. It is the seventh day and it is still in effect. Okay, I'm going to read one more thing to you in Johannan chapter 19 and verse 31. It says, the Yehudim therefore, because it was the preparation, that the body should not remain upon the torture stake on the Sabbath day. Um, for that Sabbath day was a high day, uh, meaning it was going to be a holy day on the Sabbath. And they besought uh, Pilate that their legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. So they wanted to hurry up this process. Look, it's the sun is going down. It is about to be the Sabbath. They cannot be on uh, 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 those torture stakes on the Sabbath. So hurry up, expedite this situation so that when the Sabbath starts at sundown, that that will not be uh, uh, taken place. So we have to uh, uh, consider that. And I want to read one more thing to you uh, that should clear up this matter. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 1. It says, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. Remember, I told you the trick of the adversary is getting us to believe that uh, the Sabbath is, is, or Sunday is just a different day. No, they call it Resurrection Sunday, right? It says here, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began uh, 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 to dawn toward the first day of the week. Sunday is the first day. Saturday is the last day. He rested on the seventh day. So it is a very, very slick trick of the adversary to get us to, to worship on the exact opposite of the day that was blessed and sanctified by the Most High Covenant Elohim of Israel. Uh, remember, it says that uh, uh, whoever shall break even the least of these commandments and shall teach men so they shall be considered the least in the kingdom of heaven so we have to consider uh whether or not we're going to be loyal to our organizations or whether or not we're going to be loyal to the most high covenant elohim of israel who has set forth his commandments and has said remember the sabbath to keep it holy that's all that we're going to do for today Thank you for tuning in. Shalom.